All right, so I'm at work a little bit earlier than I'm usually at work on a Tuesday morning. And the reason I'm at work a little early today is because one of my employees didn't show up. My employee was unfortunately unable to show up because he's fighting for his right to stay in the country. He's presenting his case for asylum, which he has to present again and again and again and again and hope and pray that someday he'll be allowed to be an American citizen. He's been here for over seven years, and for almost that entire time, he's been a tax-paying citizen, increasing his salary and increasing his own net worth the longer that he stayed here. Uh, I remember hiring him at a certain salary. Before he started working here, he was working someplace else, which didn't pay as well. And I've increased his salary as we've grown as a company and as we've done better to the point where I know that he is paying at least $800 to $1,000 a month just in taxes. So it kind of boggles my mind that we as a country, when we talk about our national debt, when we talk about the programs that we cannot afford, when we talk about our budget crisis, that we are willing to make it difficult for people who are active paying members of the system to stay in this country, that we are trying to keep them from staying in this country, that we're keeping them from coming to work so that they can be productive, so that they can make money. Because surprise, surprise, believe it or not, there's a lot of employees out there that will not pay you time off if you're going to court to fight for your asylum case. Like, I will. Others won't. Just food for thought there. And it just it just kind of is silly because I remember we were having a Skype conversation over the weekend about it. And he tells me, uh, you know, oh, I have, to, I have to go for an interview. I have to take off this Tuesday. And I go, oh, who's interviewing you? And they go, a judge and a prosecutor. And I go, prosecutor? And he goes, yeah, a prosecutor. And I, well, it's not a, it's an immigration prosecutor, but still. Why are we even calling it a prosecutor? Why is that the person who gets to decide if you stay here when you filled out legal paperwork to come here? You came here as a legal citizen, and you're now staying here for a different reason than the reason that you came here because things changed. Now, again, I get it. I understand that we, try, we, we have enough losers in this country that were born here. I know a lot of them. I know a lot of losers that were born here that contribute nothing to the system, that do nothing. So I understand when America says, you know what? We have enough losers as is. We don't want to let more in. I get that. But call me crazy. I think that if you have spent $1,000 a month in taxes here uh, for, th- for three years, that you should be granted citizenship. I would grant citizenship to anybody who's willing to pay that much into our system on a regular basis because they're the people that are going to be a part of helping solve the problems that we have instead of getting rid of them in favor of keeping people here who are not quite doing much of anything. So in my neighborhood, every now and then when I go to the store to get something, you'll hear some funny conversations. And my neighborhood is a lot of interesting people. And one of the things that drives me nuts is when I see that people are using their EBT or their food stamps to buy Doritos or to buy snacks or to buy, uh, you know, I- I've actually seen this crap get used to buy cigarettes before where, you know, the guy will ring it up as something else. So there are people that will use their benefits to buy cigarettes, Doritos, chips, that is not what this stuff is used for. And every now and then you'll hear them laugh about it. You'll hear them brag about it. You'll hear them talk about it like it's a badge of honor. Like, look at what I got away with. Ain't that cool? No, it's not because our taxes are collectively paying for that. And that's not cool. But here's the thing. Those people, they never have to fight for their right to stay in the country. The people who are using their food stamps to buy Doritos and cigarettes do not have to fight for their right to stay in the country. They do not have to visit a prosecutor to renew their right to be here. But somebody who is paying $1,000 a month over several years in taxes has to protect his right to be here, has to protect his right to give 30 to 40% of his salary to the federal, state, and city governments. What type of, like, what is wrong with this country? Really, what is wrong with the world that we actually think this? And when it comes to things like jobs and stealing jobs and stealing this, that, and the other, I mean, I want to find an American worker, you know what? I want to find an American worker at any price that's willing to fix four or eight retina screens and then air screens a day. I want to find somebody who can reassemble certain machines in three or five minutes. I want to find somebody who can regularly give amazing customer service regardless of how much somebody is screaming at them, bitching at them, uh, moaning at them, cursing at them. I want to find somebody who does everything just right, who will search on the floor for 10 minutes to find a screw from a unibody keyboard when nobody's going to notice that screw missing. The thing is, I've hired a lot of people that that were born in America. I was born in America. And 
I haven't found anybody born in America that does the work the same way that people who were born in other countries do. The people who work here were born in Europe, in Russia, in the Middle East. And I'm not saying that I employ people from other countries because it's cheap. The lowest salary at my business right now is somewhere in the low $20 an hour range. And I, I provide bonuses. I provide benefits. I provide unlimited sick day. I provide un, um, I provide a lot of benefits that you're just not going to find in the business that we are in right now. And I, I hired these people because I have a damn good work ethic. And what I'm finding as a pattern is that people who are born in America don't have this work ethic that people who were born outside of America have. The people who experience the challenges that you have to experience in these other countries, when they come here, it, it's dealing with the challenges that we face in America is like child's play to them. And I, and I find that these people who are born in other countries very often are better at these jobs than the people who were actually born in America. I don't hire people from other countries because it's cheap labor. I hire them because it's quality labor, and I'm more than happy and willing to pay more money for the foreign labor than I am to pay for the domestic labor that's lazy, that dicks around in their phone all day, that shows up 20 minutes late, and then comes up with excuses for why nothing got done. I like the people that I have here, and I, and I, and I am very... I feel very strongly about their right to reside in this country, and I feel very strongly about the fact that we should, uh, we should stop making it seem like we're doing them a favor by letting them here, but rather regard it as, as an honor that they're willing to stay here, as an honor that they're willing to work here instead of go somewhere else in the world where, they, where they're not going to get treated like, like an exile. Um, and, you know, that, that's what I have to say about that. Way. And then the, what really kills me is that when you read these comments from people like, yeah, these people, these people are invading our borders. These people are taking our jobs. These people are... What are you talking about? What are you talking about? What do you mean these people are taking our jobs? Because this is something that really used to drive me nuts with, with my own family and my own my grandparents. My grandparents were Italian. They came here from a town called San Benedetto, and they, I probably mispronounced it, I don't really care. They had so much against Russian people. They were like, oh, the Russians. Oh, they take our jobs. They take our apartment. They take our opportunity. Oh, Russian bad people. And I'm just thinking here, like, hmm. Well, what did you do when you first came to this country? And they said they worked in a factory and they worked. They were they were sewing. So they were sewing machines in a factory and they would make clothing. They would make all different types of things. And I said, okay. So who was working in the factory when you came there? And they would say, well, Irish people were working in the factory when we came there. Well, who was working in the factory a few years after you came there? And they go, oh, mostly Italian people. And I go, hmm. Were you guys willing to work for less money than the Irish people that were there before you? And it's like, you hate people for the same reason that that you're here. So you hate the Russian people because the Russian people are taking your jobs while and taking your apartments while you move to this little section of Brooklyn to take jobs and take apartments. Not away from other people, just to gain opportunity for yourself. And we now look at the world, we look at the rest of the world as if those people should not be allowed here. Like, this is the promised land and none of you should be allowed in. That's not the case. This is not the promised land. What makes this place the promised land, hopefully in the future, are the amazing people from around the world that are going to come here and contribute to it. People like my employee that bust their ass 40, 50, 60, 70 hours a week so that they can uh, make a living for themselves and better themselves and educate themselves and contribute to society in this country are the people that make this country great. Which is more than I can say for a lot of the people who live here and leech off of the services that we provide without actually do, without actually contributing. And I'm not here to insult social services. I'm not here to say that no social service should exist. My father has taken advantage of you know disability and workman's compensation several times when he's been injured, when he's had knee injuries, when he's had shoulder injuries. But he's also somebody who spent over 50 years of his life paying taxes into those systems. So when he decides for one year or for six months to take money out, out of that system because he needs it, I don't, you know, you shouldn't feel bad about that. That's what it's there for. You paid into that system for your entire life. It should be there for you. But we have so many people here who scam the system, who game the system, who enjoy gaming the system, who know that they're never going to contribute to society, who are happy about the fact that they're never going to have to contribute to society, who have nobody to answer to. They don't have a prosecutor to answer to that's going to take up their Tuesday morning so that they can't come to work, that they don't offer a job that they don't even have. I personally think that every single person living in America with no no criminal record who has spent three years paying $500 to $1,000 a month in taxes to our state, city, and federal governments 
should earn citizenship without having to take a test, without having to know, you know, how many stars were on the flag in this year or who is president during this year. What should matter are results. What should matter are, are you a part of making our country a better place? And if you've proven, if you have a proven track record of being a part of what's right about America, then we should welcome you with open arms rather than put you through the, all this red tape and bureaucratic bullshit where we barely make you feel like you're a welcome member of the society that very much so needs people like you here. That's crap, really. I mean, really, just think about this. Look at the way our country operates. Look at how we view immigrants. Look at how we view um, our own domestic policies when it comes to social services. And just, it, it doesn't add up. So we have somebody here who's contributing $1,000 a month to our country's budget while simultaneously stimulating the economy of our country by spending his paycheck on rent, spending his paycheck at all the different stores and all the different places that there are to spend money here in New York. So there is stringent supervision over that. There is a prosecutor assigned to this person to make sure that he lives up to the, to, to, to the rules and make sure that he has earned the right to stay in America. To and there is such a, such a stringent process that he has actually had to pay a lawyer and hire and retain an attorney to help guide him through this process. And he's a contributing citizen. But there is no process by which to ensure that the investment in individuals who are receiving up to $900 a month off of our own social services will ever pay dividends. There's nobody there to make sure that that person is ever has any intention of giving back to society. There's nobody there to ensure that when that person receives social services that they're not spending it on Doritos and cigarettes. But for some reason, this is okay. It's easy to blame problems on other people from other countries rather than looking within and realizing, hmm, if we spent just a little bit more time and effort helping the people who are active and willing participants right now in contributing to our country's economy, contributing to our country's budget, rather than spending that money on figuring out ways to get rid of them so that we can continue on, our, on the path we're on right now, maybe we'd probably, maybe we'd be somewhere better. Maybe we wouldn't be in the situation that we're in now if we didn't crap on people who were actual taxpayers. It just kills me. It kills me just knowing that I'm sitting here right now, that I woke up early to come to work because he wasn't able to come to work because he's defending his right to stay in America. Well, at the same time, while I was getting my morning iced tea, before I got on the train this morning, somebody was using their food stamps to buy fucking Doritos and cigarettes. It's just, it, it's fucking bullshit.